Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays here. The boys are going on break tomorrow. The NHL hitting their Christmas break. Now I want to ask you before we get into our props, what can betters look for for edges? Are traveling teams kind of just mailing it in? We got a lot of teams on the back end of a back-to-back. Do players yeah. just want to get this over with and get home, especially with bad weather coming? Well, it's like I told you yesterday when uh, you messaged me in the morning about the Zuccarello prop, and I said, be careful. It's Minnesota's last game before the break, and they're they're on the road. Today, I would, I would imagine that it's a very favorable spot for a lot of home teams because the home teams are at home. They don't have to worry about travel. The teams on back-to-backs on the road – it's a look ahead, right? I mean, these these players are probably just wanting to get through this game and enjoy the holidays. So um, I would be veer, very weary of betting any road teams today. Um, and I would I would imagine a lot of the advantages today you could find on home teams because they'll be the ones more amped up to play those games. They're at home. They got the crowd behind them. They'll have the energy and there's no worry about travel after the game to get home because they can go right to what their what their plan is right after the game. Columbus, Chicago, Kent Johnson, stud, absolute stud, over 0.5 points, plus 102. Not everybody knows about KJ here. He's playing with Liney and Gaudreau with Boone Jenner out. He's out four weeks, so he'll still be there. Playing with the big boys, scored in back-to-back games since moving up. This is a guy who played last year in the Olympics, the World Hockey Championships, World Juniors, NCAA. This guy is everywhere right now. Number five pick, elite offensive product, prospect here, upsize is immense. Matchup versus Chicago, who's 0-8 straight up in their last eight, 35 goals allowed. How familiar are you with, with Johnson and at plus 100 on a plus matchup, top line? Is this a green light to ride? Yeah, I'm very familiar with Kent Johnson. I mean, he scored the overtime winning goal for the World Juniors, uh, Canada World Juniors uh, last year to win the clinch the gold medal. He's got tons of skill, like really, really high-end skill, and he's getting a really high-end opportunity uh, tonight playing on the top line with with Goudreau and Line. So you have to probably, you know, think that the the excitement for him is going to be to produce because, you know, that's what young players need to do when they get these type of opportunities is they need to take advantage of it and need to produce so that, you know, whatever, whenever the decision needs to be made about, you know, who's coming in and who's coming out, the coaches know that he's capable of playing in this opportunity. And it's a favorable matchup. I mean, Chicago's an absolute tire fire right now. Losers of eight in a row. Uh, they're probably in holiday mode right now. Uh, you know, I, I read a, uh, an article of, of Max Domi being excited for 20 plus family members to spend the holidays with him. And I would imagine there's other guys too. So um, look, um, you know, with Columbus, regardless of the game, they're going to compete. Uh, they've done it all year, even with all the adversity they've dealt with. And for Kent Johnson, I mean, to record a point in this matchup seems like a no-brainer. He's going to get top-line minutes. He's going to get power play minutes. So um, I like the, the the angle you found here. Kings, Arizona, Kevin Fiala over two and a half shots on goal, minus 131, 5-0 and oh to the over his last five. 27 shots, top line, PP1. Facing Arizona, matchup is good. 35 shots per shots on goal per game allowed. And at home, 38 per game. That's the worst in hockey. Obviously, the tough spot here is the Kings playing last night. But this is an angle we've looked at. They blew a 3-1 lead. They came back to win in overtime. Now going to Arizona with a lot more confidence than having blown a 3-1 lead and walking away with just one point. Avoiding the letdown spot, can we can we at least expect just a, a regular performance from the Kings here versus a bad opponent uh, for a Kings team that's kind of wants to go into that break with a little bit of hot behind them? Well, as much as we've talked about teams looking ahead and mostly road teams, I mean, you can say the same thing about Arizona. This is a team that has had the mindset when the season started to mail in the season, so – they're probably looking ahead to the break just as much as the LA Kings are. And the LA Kings, like, you know, they've had a really impressive start to the season. They, they sit uh, second right now in the, in the Pacific Division. So I'd imagine that they want to go off on a good note. And they got a very favorable matchup. This is almost a team where, you know, on nights you can find a way to just show up and win with Arizona. And, you know, you mentioned 
um, the shots on goal that they're giving up. It's almost like a meat market when you when you play the the uh, the Arizona Coyotes because you know you're going to get your chances. They're just not that good. They give up a ton of chances. They give up a ton of shots. And you know, like we said about Ken Johnson, regardless of you know the the mindset and the preparation and the feeling going into this game, Fiala's going to get his chances. You know, playing on one of the top two lines, playing on the top PP unit against an Arizona team that doesn't really know how to defend. You know, I, I can't imagine him slowing down. I mean, we're, we're, we're aiming at the shot market here, not the pro, not the, the point market. So, you know, there's a good chance that this can continue as well, too. Colorado, Nashville, going back. I can't not go back to this team. Yeah. Evan Rodriguez over two and a half, minus 120. And Miko Ranton in the auto over right now, three and a half, plus 110. Now, yeah. the abs, more than anybody, want to keep their run five straight. Or sorry, three straight, five and two in their last seven. They want to bring that momentum into the break. They're scoring just 2.18 goals per game, it's crazy. but they're hitting sixth in shots. It's, yeah. They're just not falling. And Rodriguez, 3-1 and one to the over since returning. So a big part of Colorado was since Rodriguez has come back. Four-game stretch. Over that four-game stretch, Rodriguez, 20 minutes, uh, nine shot attempts, seven shots on goal last game, 3-1 and one to the over. Rantanen, 26 shots on goal since Rodriguez is back. 48 shot attempts, averaging 26 minutes. Uh, he's just driving the offense. Like, it, it's it's unreal, and this should really be uh, not plus money at all. And then Nashville, 27th in shots allowed per game at home at 33. So the matchup's good. How, like, how important is it for Colorado to keep driving this offense? They're getting pucks on net, but they're just not scoring. Well, it's, it's super important. You, you talked about, you know, the struggles that they we've talked about the struggles that they've been through with all the injuries this year. They've won three in a row, and it's a good way for them to cement themselves in a spot with, you know, third in the tied with Minnesota for third in the division going into the break. And I think the advantage Colorado has is that it didn't play last night like some yeah, of the other teams exactly. that played as well, too. And I watched their game the other night against Montreal, and it should have been more than just a two one overtime win because they were absolutely dominant in that game in the offensive zone. And it was led mostly by Arrington. Every time I was looking on the ice, he was on. It was crazy. I'm like, does this guy not like get tired? Is like, do they have the oxygen tanks on his back? And you're right with Rodriguez. And I think another standout has been the trade they made with the Leafs with Malgin coming in. Malgin was sliding into their top six and he looked really good last game driving the offense as well too. So I don't expect these guys to stop. It's not a long, it's not a long travel between Colorado and Nashville. And, you know, <clears throat> Colorado's mindset, <clears throat> excuse me, is probably going to be different than all the other road teams that have that are entering their games tonight on a back to back, where they probably want to go in there and finish this with a win. Um, you know, because of the way they can end sort of what's been an up and down start to their first half of the season. So let's hit those, add those together with Fiala. Let's add those with Johnson Point, and let's go into the Christmas break. On a let's holiday. make it a very Merry Christmas. Absolutely. So Merry <laughs> Christmas to everybody and their family. You too, Coco. Yes. Be safe over the New Year's, and we'll be back for next week uh, just before the New Year's, actually. So I'm Josh Ingles. He's Carlo Koliakovo. This is Covers. We'll see you back here next week. Hey, it's been a great week so far. There's been a little extra you know, money be put in my kitty because of the plays we've been hitting. Yeah. One more day before the break. Let's keep it hot. Let's do it.